Hello, and it's my honor and privilege to talk to you today at EWTS Online. My name is Sanjay Jawar. I'm the co-founder and president of Realware. And uh, I had the honor of speaking here last year on stage in person, and we'll do a little look back to what was covered there as well as uh, understand today what has happened since then in the industry from our perspective, working with many lead industrial customers, how the pandemic has really affected uh, companies' plans and efforts to uh, deploy wearable technology, and what we think has resulted from the best practice learnings from these customers that we think adds up to a new culture of frontline work. Before we get into the substance of the talk, let me um, begin by just, uh, if you're not familiar with us, introducing you a little bit to Realware. Uh, Realware is a, a four and a half year old private company uh, headquartered in the Pacific Northwest, just near Portland, Oregon. And we are um, the suppliers of the Realware HMT1, our flagship product, which you see here in this little animation. Now the HMT1 is a 100% hands-free industrial wearable. So you wear it on your head, it's not a pair of glasses. It's designed to be worn with a hard hat or a baseball cap or a headband. And it contains this display that you can see on the movable arm. And when you look into that opaque display, which you have over a little bit below the line of sight of one eye, then what you see is something that looks like a seven inch tablet uh, floating around in space in front of you. And you can control this 100% hands-free. It's an Android computer. You control it primarily with your voice and a little bit of head motion. And it allows you to control the applications in the system, even in very high noise conditions, 95 decibels or higher, uh, with no controllers, no hand gestures, no buttons, no swipe pads. That's very important for safety. It's very important to be able to uh, use these devices whilst working with your hands uh, with tools and equipment and protective equipment. So the HMT1 is today, I think, the gold standard for industrial companies around the world. Um, it's uh, just entering its fourth year of availability. We also have a, a, a system model, which is the HMT1Z1, which is specifically designed for intrinsically safe environments where there may be explosive atmospheres. So last year when I was on stage, um, I spoke about eight key customer examples and the return on investment that those customers had found uh, through the use of their uh, HMT1 devices in all these different use cases from semiconductors to oil refining to uh, warehouse operations uh, to uh, engine repair. Um, let me just give an update on some of the customers uh, shown in this slide, not all of them. Um, Coca-Cola Hellenic Bottling, our customer in Eastern Europe, beginning with Greece, expanded throughout Eastern Europe, now has over 250 HMT1s in service doing uh, a uh, pallet picking uh, much faster and more efficiently than before, and also doing remote assistance for the servicing of the equipment in the warehouse remotely. Um, they're continuing to grow and expand into more countries. It's also expanding in North America now. Uh, and we have dozens of uh, devices deployed in North America as that begins to expand with our, our really great partner uh, on this journey with Coca-Cola and Coca-Cola Hellenic Bottling, which is uh, Ubimax uh, through the use of their Exorcist and XPIC uh, products. Uh, next, I'd like to talk about BMW. BMW has HMT1s deployed in all 350 North American BMW and mini dealerships used for uh, service escalation. So when your, your car can't be um, uh, repaired or the, the, the issue is too complex to be solved by the technician locally, they can over a video call hands-free consult a master technician in New Jersey who can help troubleshoot that problem. They've discovered that um, the average time to repair in these service escalations has reduced and that means that the cost of loaner cars has gone down because um, they can get the car back to the customer faster. Uh, this is now expanding beyond Germany um, uh, into, into other countries. Uh, lastly, Burns and McDonald, our great partner and customer, which is an architecture, engineering, and consulting firm specializing in the electrical distribution industry, working with their customers, the utilities. They've been using HMT1s for the last uh, more than a year very successfully for uh, substation inspection and uh, GIS information gathering for electric utility assets. Uh, so much so that they will now be offering uh, HMT1 and visual inspection software from MHI as a combined service to their customers. In fact, they've become gone from a customer to a, a supplier of this technology uh, to their customers. And our great friend, uh, Zach Wassenberg, has a talk here at EWTS 
talking about that, which I highly recommend. So um, as we as we think about uh, what happened subsequent to last year, we've had a lot of our our customers uh, select HMT1 because of its commitment to safety. And last year in my talk, I talked about the, the, the trade-off between productivity and safety and how assisted reality as distinct from mixed reality made a, a trade-off uh, against those two things that allowed you to have enhanced productivity at the same time as enhanced safety, not at the expense of safety. And this is the style of monocular, single display, situational awareness, completely hands-free, that's a little different to some of the mixed reality styles. All of the customers on this slide picked uh, the real world solution because of that safety imperative. And the pictures here shows just some of the many ways that we've had to make the head mounted device adapt to different types of headgear and helmets. Each customer has their own unique requirements. Uh, generally customers will not change hard hats to accommodate a sp specific device. And you see here examples of hearing protection and visors and all kinds of safety glasses. So uh, the safety imperative, very important in industrial use uh, and, and something that we, we have found to be very uh, key to scale deployments. In fact, um, all of last year's Fortune top 10 global 500 companies as shown on this chart have become real world customers. This really signifies that this industry is scaling. It's no longer pilots and proof of concepts. Large global companies are scaling across the world. They have been doing so well uh, over all of the last year and accelerated even more during the COVID pandemic. Now let's talk a little bit about what's happened because of this pandemic. I'd like to frame this in the, in the, in the topics of connectivity, continuity, and culture. The firstly, connectivity. So COVID broke the chain of connectivity between vendors bringing their equipment to a factory or between field service technicians traveling out to service their equipment at a customer, be that a chemical plant or uh, another factory or um, you know, a, 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 something in aviation or in, in any industry. Uh, COVID broke the connectivity between the master who would stand alongside the apprentice and as they became expert in doing um, skilled tasks with their hands. Um, and COVID broke in many ways the connectivity between headquarters and the teams in the field. We've been able to restore that by working with lead customers and using these technologies like hands-free video collaboration uh, and being able to send devices ahead of time sometimes to customers and execute field service and, and, and factory acceptance tests remotely. This all goes to business continuity. Uh, when you have a critical disruption like Shell had recently in one of their um, terminals in Germany, a fuel terminal, where an IT outage caused the entire terminal to shut down and the, the vendor from Belgium could not travel to Germany and it could not be solved over the phone call. Uh, using an HMT1 that Shell had, they were able to uh, do a video call to the supplier in Belgium who was able to resolve the issue and bring that entire fuel terminal back online avoiding a disruption in a significant part of Germany's fuel supply. Uh, that's a great example of, of, of business continuity and an investment in a system of resilience. It's important that we can minimize staff uh, from being exposed to the virus because not only will that be terrible uh, for our staff, it will also reduce the capacity of the workforce that we have to be responsive to business continuity issues. And so the more people that can be remote, and not next to each other, the better. And remote video collaboration, remote expert assistance with hands-free devices helps there. We can also reach into our supply chain and manage the supplier risks, make sure that what we're about to be delivered from our suppliers is going to be of high quality and do audits ahead of time and uh, be proactive. We can digitally, digitally deliver services like field service, maintenance and repairs, inspections and audits, instead of having to send people. And we have to do this in a way that's highly secure from an IT perspective, because as we introduce all of this new technology, we need to make sure it's secure so that that in itself doesn't become a business continuity risk. The customers that have really done this successfully, and there are many of them, I believe have established a new culture for their frontline workforce. It's a culture where remote is the new normal. 
and everybody becomes a power user of these collaboration tools and knows how to work all the advanced features. And, and it's a culture of being proactive about managing the customer risk and the supplier risk and building capacity and resilience into the business processes themselves so that the next time a lockdown comes or cases increase, that the organization is more robust than it was before, all while simultaneously lowering the cost of travel, lowering the cost of service delivery, hedging against the current economic environment, and being prepared for an acceleration coming out of the pandemic when hopefully the, vi the vaccine becomes available. Having made these investments in digital transformation to be able to move faster and, and accelerate better into the new environment. So when you put this together, connectivity that helps with knowledge transfer, continuity in business operations, and the new culture, we have a, a path towards resilience, acceleration, and opportunity to uh, be better than we were before. And I think this is a very profound shift in frontline workers. Now, uh, COVID-19 has a number of direct challenges which these technologies can help with as well, uh, from increasing the manufacturing and, and ramp of uh, N95 masks like our customer Honeywell did with HMT1s, to uh, socially distant infrastructure maintenance, improving the telemedicine capacity for the healthcare system to avoid exposing so many doctors to the virus, and also accelerating the production ramp of antibody treatments and vaccines at leading pharmaceutical companies. All of these are current use cases uh, for industrial wearables right now. Um, some of the companies that have really accelerated their usage are the ones showcased here. Honeywell uh, in its um, uh, uh, refining and um, uh, industrial control systems businesses as well as its aerospace business. Mars in its uh, pet care business where they've been able to introduce rapidly uh, wearables for remote assistance and new equipment commissioning uh, in their pet, pet food factories. And Shell, which has so many use cases now uh, and has seen uh, just a, a, a great improvement in the end user acceptance once you have to use these technologies for real to solve problems that couldn't be solved another way. And so we have a, a population of very enthusiastic end users that have overcome any initial skepticism they may have had. Now, not only were there customers that started before the pandemic, there are many customers that have started since the pandemic. And in less than six months, in some cases in less than three months, they've been able to go uh, from zero to full-scale commercial deployments, such as Bosch, Renault Trucks with its commercial uh, vehicle servicing in Europe, Rail Cargo Group, which is uh, doing um, train and, and rolling stock inspections in uh, Austria and Switzerland and Germany, uh, to Heat and Control, for example, that uh, is a key supplier of... Uh, uh, equipment for food processing at snack food manufacturers that, that, that do baking and frying operations at industrial scale. Um, in, in three to six months or less, customers have been able to get to full uh, commercial usage of these solutions. So let me now um, introduce uh, a, a short video about uh, our partnership with Cisco, which has been key to the scaling of uh, remote assistance in wearable devices with Cisco WebEx Expert On Demand featuring our customer, Hirschman Automotive. Introducing Expert On Demand. Hey Jeff, thanks for joining. Uh, I'm here with Alex and we're just doing a quick troubleshooting and thought you might be able to help us out. Content sharing. You're able to see that? Yep, I can see that. And real-time annotation, so you can highlight important aspects and provide detailed direction. Go ahead and show me the problem right there. This issue here, this curve is too tight. Just move that to right here. Hirschman Automotive and Dairy Farmers of America are both finding significant efficiency gains and improving business resiliency with the WebEx Expert on Demand solution with Realware. Hirschman was able to improve first-time resolution while significantly reducing travel expenses. Cisco donated an array of technology to the Dairy Farmers of America, including Realware HMT1s. DFA can now connect its teams across the country in multiple manufacturing facilities with the highest level of security. Collaboration has changed significantly over the last couple of years. The agility in today's environment requires instant, seamless collaboration across the entire enterprise. With this in mind, 
we understand that the collaboration and technology needs for frontline workers are very different. With WebEx Expert on Demand, we wanted to execute on the commitment to deliver a tailored solution that provides high quality, hands-free video collaboration between the frontline workers and the right experts, anywhere, anytime. Cisco, of course, one of the major players in video collaboration. Another major player who's seen tremendous growth is, of course, Microsoft Teams. And Microsoft Teams is also a real-world partner. Pleased to say that as of mid-October, uh, Microsoft Teams is a general availability on the real world HMT1. We have many lead customers that have been using it in the last six months in the customer preview phase. And this video will showcase a little bit of uh, Sachin Adela and what he thinks about this, as well as customers Honeywell and Total. We are innovating to support the more than 2 billion first line workers around the world. Workers at Honeywell factory in Houston, Texas for using Teams embedded in a wearable computer from our partner Realware to live stream what they see to remote colleagues and experts while having hands-free conversations. Honeywell is a technology company. We believe that we need to always be on the leading edge. We're bringing every product to the market faster to improve everyone's life. We build the products and they have to be tested for COVID. We'd have a couple hundred engineers all in a facility to do this factory acceptance test. As we went into COVID-19 lockdowns, we couldn't get the engineers here anymore. We just couldn't do it. With the use of Teams and Realware, we don't have to have everyone in the same location. The ability for a first-line worker to be at a task, hands-free, reach out to an expert, and they can work through the problem together. And that saves you know, a tremendous amount of time, eliminates travel, and resolves the problem more quickly. Hello, guys. It's Nabil and Fabrice from the Smart Room in Normandy. How can we help you? So we had a, some intermittent vibrations last night reported by operation. He said the vibration was reported mostly in the thrust bearing, correct? Yes. We'll continue to deploy the digital tools that connect frontline worker with subject matter experts wherever they are in the world. Those are two of the largest players in video collaboration at an enterprise level, Cisco and Microsoft. Of course, there are others, and one that I'm sure that you know well is Zoom. And so I'm uh, delighted to be able to for the first time, talk publicly about our partnership with Zoom and like to roll the next video, which talks about what we've been able to accomplish together with Zoom. Realware and Zoom have worked together on a hands-free user interface for the Zoom Android app on the HMT1. This solution has been successfully deployed in production since the start of 2020 at a large global industrial customer in every continent of the world at significant scale. Let's take a look at how it works in this demo. Zoom. Contacts. Tim Greve. Meet. Admit. Hi, Tim. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Pat. Excellent. Uh, so I'm taking a look at this meter today. Uh, tell me if you can get a look at this. Video switch? I can. Uh, Pacific Wars. Yep. Pacific Wars meter. WebEx Expert on Demand, Microsoft Team, and Zoom. This, if nothing else, shows uh, that remote collaboration on hands-free devices is ready to scale globally all over the world. Now, I'd like to leave the last word here really to um, uh, our customer, uh, Mars Pet Care. And um, uh, this little uh, interview segment will really show that no matter what has happened during the pandemic, there's no going back uh, to the way things were before. COVID inspired you to look at different remote uh, communication alternatives. Uh, and now that you've found one and you've seen it be effective, what happens on a go forward basis? Yeah, I think for us, you know, 
I think every company, and not only ours, is learning that we can work differently. Um, we're working differently, and we're still being successful, um, even in in a different work environment. So, you know, I think that goes from people not going into a physical office anymore and working from home more often than not. Uh, Mars is very much a, a social collaboration business, so I think we'll always have. Our, our big national offices and people will go in at some point um, at some level of, uh, of you know, attendance. Um, but it's also going to change the way we do business from a travel standpoint. Long term, it'll be uh, probably a 30 to 40 percent reduction in, in travel just to uh, and use these these platforms to stay connected in our plants. Thank you so much for your attention today. We're really excited to be working with all of you uh, through this digital transformation at this challenging time. Please come and see us at our virtual booth, which you can get to through the EWTS website. And we look forward to working with you to accelerate your connected worker digital transformation. Thank you.